You know, what was uh, that last minute adjustment like going into this fight? Say, hey, you're not fighting James, like, you're fighting Noah. <laughs> yeah, it was actually like less than 24 hours, like before, mm-hmm. like it was right before the weigh in, like five minutes before the weigh in. What's good? What's going on, everybody? You're tuning in with Prime Media, where people recognize one man entertainment. I'm joined by the one and only Vito Mill Nicky Jr. I pronounced that right, correct? All right, cool, 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 cool. Do me a favor, just hold that mic up a little more so people can hear you more better. Um, so, well, first of all, Thank you for no. Thank you for letting coming. me to your I home. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. Yes, sir. Very nice of you. Very hospitable family right here. Yeah. My man, you are you are 19 years old. Yeah. Listen, uh, you ever had? You probably haven't had this feeling, but when you look at somebody, you feel like you're doing good in life, and then you see someone, you're like, damn, you're younger than me. <laughs> you give you guys a background, Vito. He is 19. He is nine and one with six knockouts as a professional fighter. He's a four-time wow. national junior glove champion, a two-time silver glove champ, and he's fought over the uh. Excuse me. He's made the USA national team not once but twice. Correct. Uh, I made the USA national team once. Once. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Once. Yes. See. I've and been. Uh, I grew up with all top amateurs, top pros. Now, Shakur mm-hmm. Stevenson, Gervonta Davis, or John Chance, uh, Keyshawn Williams, who was on my the car, who was supposed to be on my card. Uh, John. I already said John Chance, but a lot of pe- Malik Nelson. Mm-hmm. We all grew up together in the amateurs, being around guys like that growing up, and just seeing everyone doing well now. Uh, doing their thing, it's it's cool. And at 19 years old, you're fighting on cards with PBC Premier Boxing Champions yes, on the sir. Fox Sports, some of the biggest cards. You're on the Fury Wilder fight. You're traveling yeah. the world. I want to ask you one question before I segue into that one. Dude, at 19, you're you're in high school. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. What was what was it like? Everything kind of ramping up that fast in high school. Yeah, I mean, um, being signed with Al Heyman and Premier Boxing Champions, it's. At my age, it was cool. It was like a dream come true just because growing up, I was always watching guys like Floyd Mayweather, who was with Al Heyman at, at, throughout his whole career. Um, just Manny Pacquiao, who's now with them, Deontay Wilder, Earl Spence, the Charlo brothers. And now I'm on the same stable as them. And then being in high school, it was just, I've always been a quiet kid. I'm I, like in the hallways. I'm always just with my headphones in doing my thing. But um, obviously we knew that I wasn't going to college. I was mm-hmm. just going to, boxing was what I'm doing. And um, everyone has their own path. So doing it throughout high school, it was cool. It was it was uh, fun. Right. Was, yeah. And coming off of your second round, knockout versus Noah Kid. We'll get to that fight a little bit later. Yeah. You said in the post uh, fight interviews, you said um, that you've been fighting since you were seven years old. Yeah. Now, it was, se- it was at seven that you said, hey, like, dad, mom, dad, I want to box. Or was that a little later on? Uh, well, it was at seven when I first went to the gym, but it was probably, I'd say, around like 11 or 12 that I knew that this is what I wanted to do like professionally. I I played football as well, but I always wanted to be an athlete. Like mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to be just, I didn't want to work like a job. Like, right, right. So I always Five. knew that I wanted to be just a professional athlete. It was just at that age, 11 or 12, where I knew that boxing is what I wanted to do to as a living. To provide. Yeah. yeah. Provide. Now see, that to me is wild because kids your age... Well, our age, because I'm only 22. Yeah. But, you know, you, you get faced with the party scene a lot. Yeah. Drinking, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You obviously chose a different mindset. Yeah, exactly. I want to ask you the same question I asked Chris Milton during the Olympics. Mm-hmm. With all this going on between school, young age, traveling the world, how did you build your mindset? What took to build your mindset to say, this is what I have to do, this is what I have to avoid, no to parties, no to friends right now, focus on boxing? Yeah, I mean... I use this saying one of one like I look at myself I'm one of a kind I'm like I'm different um and I think to to be able to do do what I'm doing at a high level you have to sacrifice you have to not you have to miss family family events parties during high school all that drinking all the other stuff that the kids at our age do you just have to look at the bigger picture when you're I'm 19 I want to be able to at 26 27 look i'm I, now i could do that t- now mm-hmm. i could do whatever i want like you know what i mean i i sacrifice now so that uh i could have everything later and um just having a, a mindset of looking at sacrifices like they're not even sacrifices because i'm doing what i yeah. love like so if i'm doing what i love i can't even say that they're sacrifices so um those kind of things they don't, I mean, they don't even phase me, to be honest with you. Really? I, mean, I don't think about it, I, because I'm doing what I love. Like, I, I'm get, like, I was blessed to be put in this position, and uh, I'm just going to take full advantage of it. I'm not going to let anything take that, t- 
t- let anything take this away from me. Yeah, because, dude, like, you know, watching you fight, seeing how young you are, you're obviously really committed. And mm-hmm. you talk about your uh, coach Lamont saying proper preparation prevents poor performance. Yep. Absolutely. So that obviously comes with nutrition. Yeah. You're fighting. All but around. then a lot of people don't talk about the mindset. Yeah, the mindset. So I'm looking at you like, damn, this guy's probably faced with a lot of hard things. Yeah. And it's like, you must have been, well, you, you obviously have a great household yeah. here, Italian yeah. family, strong yeah. household. Yeah. So you're always strong headed growing up, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, my mom and dad, they always, growing up, they said, whatever you want, you'd go get it, you'd chase it. And um, they they instilled that mindset in me growing up. And um, my dad and my mom, they're hard workers. They Everything that we have, it's because they went out and they worked for it. They, mm-hmm. they broke their ass to get everything that we have. So um, just looking at my mom and dad, them working every day, my dad wakes up 4.30, home at 9, wakes back up at 4.30, like... I want to be able to tell my my dad, look, we're good. Like you know what I mean. Like we, right. you ain't got to worry about all that other stuff no more. So, like um, that's that's my motivation. Every day that I go to the gym, I do this because I want to be able to tell them like we're good, we're mm-hmm. t- chill, like we're we're we could do what we want now. Right. So yeah. you kind of just killed my sec my next question. I was gonna see what is the the vision for Vito in boxing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I guess that that would say your vision is financially uh, stabilizing your whole family yeah obviously obviously the belts all that that that's gonna come with Mm -hmm. with the the money and all that but um yeah i think a lot of guys they um they look at this sport as a way a way out a way to get their family to where they to where they want to get them to they want to be able to stabilize to make their family stable and uh not have to worry about paying bills paying all the other stuff and just provide like you yeah. know what i mean just be able to tell their family like we're good like we could do what we want you want to go on vacation let's go on vacation mm-hmm. you know what i mean so but like i said the belts and everything are going to come with it and um every like all professional fighters we go in and we're our life's on the line every time we step in the ring absolutely and um doing what you love and getting paid for it is obviously the it's next, cool to do too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You 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 already foresee the life after boxing. You yeah. have your brand. Mm-hmm. By the way, tell the people where they can find your brand and your merchandise at. Uh so yeah, you can find my merchandise on Fit Warrior brand. Uh the they have mine all on their website, all that. And uh we'll be making more merch, fight night merch for my next fight. But um the last fight was all black, so we had the white hats with the black logo. And uh obviously that changes every fight, but Stay you tuned for the newer merch. A huge stand you had. Yeah, yeah. A huge stand. Did you see your stand? Uh, Foam not, fingers, hoodies, hats, yeah, t-shirts, yeah. all of it. it was, yeah, I didn't I loved see it. it. That was dope. Yeah, yeah, they set it up nice. When you, obviously you're fighting in the Prudential Center. Props to you. Great event. Yeah. Great arena. How many people can say they fight in arenas like that? Yeah. You also had the house packed. Yeah. Out of all the fights I watched that night, I had the honor of being in attendance there. Your fight was the most electrifying. Yeah. That's why I titled it in my article for New Stitch Media. What is it like to see when you drop somebody or when you even enter the ring, yeah. everyone screaming your name and on yeah. this feet for you? Yeah, once again, it's like a dream come true. Like, just growing up, like, watching all these other fighters, like, all the top guys coming out, everyone's going crazy for them. I, I was blessed enough to go to a lot of fights in person, a lot of big fights in person. And uh, one in particular, the Miguel Cotto versus Austin Trout at Madison Square Garden. Okay, I remember me and my dad were there. And Austin Trout was like an underdog. He was going into the fight as an underdog, and he beat Miguel Cotto. And the crowd's going crazy. Everyone's going nuts. And um, as we're leaving, we're going down the escalator, leaving. And I'm like, Dad, like, I won't. I can't wait till I'm here. Like, I want to do this. Like, this is it. We're gonna be here one day. And the manifestation. Yeah. Every time before the fight, before one of my fights, especially one at home in front of our hometown crowd. My dad tells me, you remember that moment. I remember it too. You remember that moment. <laughs> and yeah, it's just everything comes full circle. You said manifestation. That's put manifest all my thoughts and what I say into existence. So that's definitely uh, happening right now for right. sure. And yeah. I see it going forward because in that post-fight interview, mm-hmm. you talked about, you were asked about James Martin. Yeah. If you were like perturbed that you didn't get that fight and you said, I don't even need him. Yeah. You knew going forward, you were on to a next level. Yeah. Why Why did you know after you just won that fight that you knew you didn't need James Martin no more? That you already put aside yeah. that rematch that you wanted? Yeah, just because I did my job. I came in on weight. 
I had, I broke my ass for eight weeks mm-hmm. in the training camp, and I made sure I came in on weight. And the day before, they were they were a, a ways away from 147. They were I heard everything like from other people. My my uh, my dad, my trainers. They were talking about how much he was away from the 147 weight limit. It's almost like he didn't even try. He didn't even care. Yeah. And uh, if if we did fight. Right then and there, I knew I it was over, like you want to come like you're not taking this prof- like seriously professionally. I broke my ass for eight weeks. I I've been thinking about you for five months ever since that right. fight happened, our our first fight. So um, yeah, I knew just because. I'm with Al Heyman. That's another reason why. Like Al Heyman, he's the best of the best. I know he's gonna, oh absolutely he's gonna get me to where I want to be, and they they treat me as if I'm one of those top top guys already like Excellent. the charlo mm-hmm. brothers deontay wilder Earl spence like they make sure everything's in line for me and uh like you saw they had me in my hometown in at the prudential center and we're looking to do more shows there so they al Heyman is the the best of the best i want to thank him obviously doing everything in his power to get me to where i want to be absolutely because i mean you could see it because you're fighting with a guy who works with names you said, Earl Spence, Tank, yeah. Charlotte Bros, Mayweather. Time, you yeah. heard it all the time for his post post fights interviews. Now I'm working with Al Heyman. Yeah. Working out. You at 19 years old are getting to work with yeah, someone exactly. of that caliber. Yes, sir. And it's great to see that they have or uh, that they already see the potential in you because mm-hmm. they wouldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. But they see it in yep. yourself. Yep. yep. You see it in yourself. Yes, sir. And I don't think that's a lot of thing that people understand the. Mental strength it takes for you to walk out of that fight. Mm-hmm. That you weren't even ready. Not you, you were ready for the fight, yeah. but you were ready for a different fighter. Yeah. And to say, I don't even need him anymore. Mm-hmm. Most people hold on to that. You didn't. Yeah. You went to know a kid, and correct me if I'm wrong, you went into it a little heavier, right? You uh, were, it wasn't the, your work was, was like 152? The first fight. The yeah. fight with Martin. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, we uh, did a catch weight at 152 because I was coming off uh, February 27th win against Noe Lopez on Fox. Mm-hmm. And um, I had got a third round stoppage, I think, on Fox um, against Noe Lopez. And um, so they, I had my two weeks off of recovery, let my body recover from a, a tough camp. And then we got the call. Like we have another, you have a spot on Fox. You want it or no? And me being the guy I am, I'm a, I like to fight. Go like, get it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. So we right. jumped into a camp. We had like a four week camp and my coach, Muhammad, he actually got COVID. So he tested positive. So he had to quarantine for two weeks. So I was in the gym training myself and then unprofessional. It was a little like we just made an unprofessional decision. I think going into that fight, having me train myself and it was really me working on my weight, bringing my weight down, trying mm-hmm. to get it down because I, I get pretty big in between fights just because right. I'm still growing. I'm 19. Right. So yeah. we uh, did a catch weight at 152, which meant bigger gloves. We had to wear 10 ounce gloves. Uh, it was just it wasn't it wasn't the right decision going into that first fight. That's why right after the fight, I knew when I first came out of the ring with James Martin, I told everyone knew, look, the rematch is next. Yeah. And. We knew that it was going to happen. It was just a matter of when and when, where, and like, and it, it was supposed to happen, obviously. But like I said, I did my job. I came in at 147 on the dot, and he came in, I think he came in 152 or something. Yeah. And it is what it is. That's why I said we're moving past it. We're moving on to bigger and better things. And that's why it was so surprising me in that moment. I was like, wow, this guy knows he would have won again. Oh, you, 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 yeah. you knew you were going to win yeah, yeah. and you let it go, which is amazing to you. Yeah. Now going into your fight against Noah Kidd, for those who haven't seen it, I already kind of asked you this question after the fight, but I'll ask you for those who haven't seen, you know, what was uh, that last minute adjustment like going into this fight? Say, hey, you're not fighting James now, you're fighting Noah. <laughs> yeah, it was actually like less than 24 hours like before, mm-hmm. like it was right before the weigh-in, like five minutes before the weigh-in, we had to redo the contracts, all that, we had to resign, yeah. and it was just like, all right, like, I just got to go in and be me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we sparred all different types of guys in camp. Uh, I sparred all top guys. So it was just like, all right, just go in and do you, right. be you. So we obviously did watch some tape. But um, like I said, it was more of just go in and do your thing. Dude, and yeah. did that feel like any, like, anger in you? Because it looked like he could not, he looked like he didn't belong in the ring with you. No, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, I was looking for that. The anti- highly anticipated rematch. Yeah. So it was just like, like it, it was a little bit like wow. Like I, it would have been 
a be- an even better night if it was James Morton right. because I know what the outcome was. Like I knew, I already knew what was going to happen. And um, in front of your home crowd too. Yeah, in front of my home crowd, and it didn't take like it took. I don't know if you want to say it took something away from the night, but for me, I just I just look at the good in every situation, and you um, have to. I obviously I put in uh, put on a great performance against Noah Kid, mm-hmm. but like you said, it was. It was a little, you know what I mean. It was, yeah. yeah no. So, um, yeah. But like I said, we got we got some bigger things coming, and uh, I I can't wait to announce them. They're coming soon. No, absolutely, yeah. And I want to get your insight because I'm not a boxer, I'm not a yeah. fighter. You yeah. know, I'm a media guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are working with some top names, you know, at a young age. Can you yeah. just talk about like what it's like to work with Al Heyman, who works alongside of people like Floyd Mayweather yeah. and Errol Spence? I mean, everything is done professionally to a T. Mm-hmm. Like, just like I said, I watched all those guys growing up. So it's like, wow, like I'm on the same cards as these guys. Like I'm, I'm right, like I'm right there. I just got to keep doing my thing and I'm going to be right there. So, um, yeah, it's just, I'm just blessed, extremely blessed to be put in this position and I just got to take full advantage of it. And then it gets you into doors with your training with Lamont Peterson. Yeah, yeah. You know, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, he's, he'll be in my next camp as well, so he's he's a part of the team now. But um, everything he says is knowledge. So everything, I'm like, whenever I'm around him, I'm like a sponge. I'm just right. absorbing everything he's saying and either incorporating it into my what I do in my style mm-hmm. or just keeping it always in the back of my head just because everything, like I said, he says he, he's he been through it. He's been at the lowest of lows and the highest of highs. So just I want to take everything he says and, and put it into my arsenal. And the student of the game is going back to the basics. Well, not basics. After the fight, you were asked about what's next for you and you're like, I'm going to take some time to yeah. really learn and grow. Yep, yep. What specifics are you looking to grow on or if you're not allowed to talk about that on Mm -hmm. camera it's cool but what are you looking to really grow on personally yourself in this game yeah so i mean i'm actually heading out to go train with sean porter okay for a little bit tony harrison i'm gonna go to his camp as well so just sharing the ring with guys like that you automatically are getting better you're you're gaining knowledge you're adding things to your arsenal and um obviously other little tweaks um but uh just getting most emotionally mentally and just physically stronger i'm 19 so all those aspects are going to come but just learning just got to keep learning keep adding to my arsenal keep getting better yeah absolutely they, you know they say you're the sum of the five or you're the sum of the five most people you hang around with mm-hmm. the most yep, you're yep. obviously surrounding yourself with yes, the most prominent people in the game to yep. put yourself in that best foot forward mm-hmm. what's uh Great. What's one of your favorite experiences while working with some of these guys? I probably say my when I sparred with Julian Williams out of Philly. Uh, he's a he was the unified world champ at 154 last year. Um, so when I shared the ring with him for the first time, like I was the first few rounds, I was like, I was I right, I'm good. I'm I'm working. Yeah. Everything's good. Like, I think we got to, like, the sixth, seventh, and eighth round, and he just started, he was on me. Like, he was <laughs> on, I'm like, damn, like, yo, what? So, just, when I was in the ring with him, obviously for the first time, he, he's a little bigger than me, but mm-hmm. he he was a student of the game, and you could tell that he watches fights every day. He's He just eats, sleeps, boxing. and shits boxing. Yeah. Like, everything is about boxing, getting better and better, and uh, he became a product of what he did at each and every day. So um, just when I shared the ring with him, it was uh, definitely a great experience. Now for you as a student, what does your normal day look like for people that don't know the day in veto when it comes to training in camp and as well as outside of camp? Yeah, so in camp, it's more of like definitely more intense, strict. Right. So um, in a camp, a day in camp with me, it would be so you wake up like 4.30, you want to get you if you want to have a little snack before you go run you get a little snack um but for me i don't like to i like to run i don't like to eat before i run so i run at like five and then i come back have a breakfast shower take a nap um when i wake up i eat again a little lunch probably around 10 30 11 so i'm having lunch at like 10 30 in the morning 11 o'clock and then um go to the gym at 12 boxing 
and then come home at like two thirty three. Uh, shower, eat again, dinner at like four thirty, and then go to the my strength and conditioning at six o'clock at night, mm-hmm. and then uh probably get back at like seven thirty eight, and then I'm I'm home for the night. I don't I just have like a little shake or whatever it is a smoothie, and then I go to sleep. Yeah. Wow. So and then just repeat the next day. So that's a day in camp with me. So it's like usually. Depending on how your body feels, obviously, as you get towards the fight, you want to let your body recover more right. in between workouts. So uh, usually two to three workouts, definitely two workouts a day, but usually three, um, three workouts a day. And then outside of camp, it's more of like, so you, I just came from the gym before uh, we started this. So yeah. just doing my thing a little, I lifted a little bit, went on the treadmill, uh, did a little bit of cardio and then go to the gym later again, the boxing gym, just staying sharp. Yeah, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. That's impressive. That's yeah. a full talent, and people complain about not having time to work out at all. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, for me, it's like, I guess this is all I do. Like this, mm-hmm. I've dedicated everything to this. So for me, it's a little different just because this is it's my job. Career. Yeah, yeah, this absolutely. is my career. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I, I want to get to where I want to be. So, what are some of your favorite? Um, for example all access they have all access you can watch the fights mm-hmm. leading up to them what are some of the favorite things you like to watch do you like to watch fights all access the preparation yeah. like, what do you like to watch to gear yourself mentally and take notes on yeah um i like to watch fights obviously i watch boxing all day i'm always on my phone whether i'm out to eat waiting for my food i, I just have boxing on my phone watching yeah. on youtube but uh it's all access is i like i like tanks last all access it was yes i like that yeah, one too it was good um I like to watch old ones too. I have the Showtime thing on my TV, so I just mm-hmm. search up all the all accesses. But really, just I watch some Netflix here and there, some movies. Okay. Yeah, I watch a little bit of Netflix, but other than that, just I don't really have time to like no, watch that. any movies yeah. and all that. Uh, mostly boxing. That's all I usually mm-hmm. watch. Yeah, on YouTube. And one one of the last things I want to ask you leading up with this is uh your fighter that you follow the most. Is there someone that like kind of sparked this flame? Besides yeah. you being a physical person, they said, ah, I gravitated this guy watching him. Yeah, definitely Roberto Durant, I'd say. Roberto Durant, he's an old timer. Uh he could punch. So I like I like guys who could punch and um I watch him all the time. But I like Canelo, obviously. I like Floyd, Andre Ward. They're they live the sport, and they they that's what happens when you live the sport. Andre Ward, I'd say, probably one of the most hardworking, gifted guys in boxing. Uh, Canelo Alvarez, after he fought Floyd, you haven't seen a fighter like him out right now. So, yeah. Floyd Mayweather, obviously, that's Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, like, yeah. yeah, Floyd's Floyd. So, those guys are definitely, those four, Roberto Durant, Andre Ward, Canelo Alvarez, and Floyd are definitely my guys that I watch mostly. Wow. Any yeah. dream person you you hope to share the ring with before they step out of the game as you move up? Mm. Might be probably Canelo. Canelo? That would be like a dream <laughs> That'd person. Be dope. Like, just because, like, like I said, I watch him all the time. That'd probably be the more, more realistic type of fight just be, if because he's still – he's not – old he's right, still no, young he's young saying. he's like in his prime he's fighting a lot and uh i'm 19 so i'm still growing so who knows what weight class i'll end up at but uh oh, damn that would be yeah, yeah, yeah. still growing yeah. still going yeah, up exactly going to the top exactly. 19 years old he's already with premier boxing champions yes, sir. working with al Heyman. yep yep four-time national junior glove champ two-time yes, silver glove champ made the usa national team mm-hmm. what can't this man do he'll be a champion next <laughs> yes, sir. has his own brand let the people know where they can find your yeah, brand again F- fit warrior brand uh their website it's also on my bio uh on instagram i also have a youtube vita monlicky jr that's what my channel is called instagram vita monlicky and twitter vita monlicky jr Boom, boom, right there and there. Yes, I'll put sir, everything in the yes, description sir. too so everyone can find it. Vito, it was a pleasure having you yes, on, sir. getting to talk to you. I appreciate the hospitality from your family. Thank you as yeah, well. Definitely would love to do it again. As oh, well. yes, sir. Absolutely yes, got to pop on yep, off. Yep, yep, yep. Once again, you guys are tuning in with Prime Media, where people recognize one man entertainment, and we'll see you guys next time.